Hey, you're listening to Ty Bollinger of CancerTruth.net. You're also listening to Justin and Kate with Extreme Health Radio. These guys are great. Enjoy listening to them. I always do. Welcome, Welcome to Extreme Health Radio. Extreme Health Radio. Where natural solutions to almost every health condition are out there. Are out there. Join us on our journey to find them. Yeah. Now, here are your hosts. Broadcasting from sunny Southern California around the world. Justin and Kate Stellman. Well, we are quite the busy bees this morning, let me tell you, weren't we, Kate? <laughs> Woke up three hours ahead of what I needed to do, and I'm still not caught up. <laughs> I know. I did this. I did the rebounder. I did the sauna. Mm. Uh, you walked Maggie, ran some errands, took a shower. What didn't I do? <laughs> Save the world. <laughs> Save the world. Wow. This has been a great day already, and we're yeah. just starting the show. Gorgeous. Amazing. I love it. So today is, what's the reference today? Today's, what's the date today? It's November 7th, 2013. November 7th, 2013. And we have a great guest for you today. We're chock full of great information with Dr. Victor Zinus today. And his website's natdent.com. And we'll be introducing him in just a second. Just a beautiful day here in Southern California. Beautiful fall day. And it's just amazing. Nice and warm. And this is episode number 173. So you can check out the show notes and any links that we talk about. Kate is going to be so kind to take notes for us. It's the kind of girl I am. The kind of girl you are. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so if you go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash 173, you'll be able to check out everything that we talk about today. And if you'd like to join us on Facebook and keep up to date with our shows, our community is growing every single day and it's a lot of fun interacting with you guys. And Kate is going to be on there soon. Yes, that's on, right. On the Facebook community? Yep. I'll finally get my act together and one more thing to add, but I'm excited <laughs> about it. Yeah, that'll be fun. So if you go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash Facebook, you'll be able to do that. Click the like button and you'll be you'll be able to keep up to date with our past shows, our show archives, our future show schedules and all kinds of good stuff. And let's see, if you'd like to join the show, lots of different ways to do that. If you want to go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash live and join the chat room and ask a question there. We've recently launched a live show, so that'll be a fun way to get your questions asked and listen to the show as it's happening, unedited and raw. (laughs) So that's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) And if you'd like to send uh, an email, I'm sorry, to justin at extremehealthradio.com to ask a question, you can do that too. Or Or to Kate, K-A-T-E, at extremehealthradio.com as well. Yeah, and lots of great guests coming up. Dr. Jack Cruz, tomorrow we're going to be talking about the leptin protocol, cold thermogenesis. He's a, a neurosurgeon, paleo kind of style guy, really interesting guy. Then we've got Emil de Tafol. I'm not sure how you say his last name, but he's with Less EMF. Oh, right. And we'll be talking about frequencies and all this harmful electromagnetic field radiation hmm. that we have going on, most of us, from our cell phones and things. And then we have Daniel Vitalis talking about hormone health. Oh, right. Yeah. So this is good. Got him back. It's we love good. Daniel. Mm-hmm. And his website is surthrival.com. And if you're interested in any of his products, if you go to our website, forward slash surthrival, you'll be able to check out his products. But today we have Dr. Victor Zionis, and he has been practicing holistic dentistry for 25 years. I received his degree from NYC. College of Dentistry completed an internship at Eastman Dental Center in Rochester, New York. Mm. And he's been in the practice of doing this since 1980, and he received his master's in science and nutrition from the University of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And he published an article back then called Nutritional Eases Dental Problems, published in 1980. Golly. He's been talking about this stuff. So, wow, long <laughs> I think time. you might know a thing or two, huh? You might know a thing or two, so... <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Zinus, for being on the show today. My pleasure. And how are you doing today? Everything going well for you? Everything is going quite well. Awesome. Excellent. And you are... In... It's not Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have it pretty darn good, I'll say. But you're in New York, right? I'm up in Woodstock right now. I practice in New York City and in Woodstock, which is an interesting contrast, but it works for me. I'm an interesting contrast, so... <laughs> <laughs> so it works it out well. Works. It all works out. <laughs> Do you still uh, see patients? Oh, yes. You do. <laughs> Quite oh. a few. Okay. And so, do you see a lot of patients per day, or, or how does that work for you now? Well, yeah. Well, you know, we don't see a lot per day. 
I'm not into seeing people every 20 minutes and going high yeah. as they walk through. <laughs> right, right. But uh, uh, we see usually one every 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, so you spend a little more time than most dentists do these days. One tries. One yeah. tries. And you're the author of three books that we want to talk about, Live a Longer Life, Healthy Mouth, Healthy Body, and Your Tongue Never Lies. Mm-hmm. So those three are available on your website? Oh, yes. Yes, they certainly are. Okay, excellent. And what is uh, the most intriguing one to me? Sounds like your tongue never lies. That's a great title. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very simple. There's a, a country, oh, it's some small country in Asia. I think it's called China, <laughs> where they uh, have been using tongue diagnosis for something like 5,000 years, uh-huh. which is a very easy way of seeing what's going on in the body. It's interesting that we do nothing about that in this country. But bottom line is that your tongue is the only internal organ that you actually can see. It's got a high vascular rate, and it shows up changes quickly. Now, I'm I'm sure many people in your audience have had a cold or a flu or have done a detox program. Mm -hmm. What happens with your tongue when that goes on? Do you know? Ooh. Yeah, it gets uh, white, right? Yeah, hey, got it. You got a gold star. It gets white <laughs> because what that means is that toxins are coming out. Uh-huh. So a very simple thing one can do in the morning is wake up and go to your bathroom and take a look in the mirror and stick your tongue out and see what it looks like. Mm. And you can get uh, quite a bit of information about your own state of health. For instance, if your tongue is yellow or yellowish green, it's usually indicative of liver or gallbladder problems. Oh. If it's gray or brownish gray, it can be stomach or intestinal. Uh-huh. We mentioned the white is, is basically a toxic condition. If you have uh, cracks on the top of your tongue, that can be a vitamin deficiency. If you have scalloping on the sides of your tongue, it's usually a mineral deficiency. And if your tongue is large and you have scalloping, you may, in fact, have sleep apnea. Oh and God. if the tip of your tongue is red, it can be the heart or thyroid weakness. Heart or thyroid. So there's, there's, there's some interesting things you can, can pick up just by waking up and look, going to the bathroom and looking in the mirror. Um, the fact is that nobody looks at this except your dentist. And unfortunately, this is not taught in dental school, to say the very least. When your tongue is white like that, I've heard that's uh, related to candida. Is that correct? That's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. What I want to do is just give people a a little broad sense of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Candida will will show up not only in your tongue, but also on the sides of your cheeks. And since you brought it up, if you have um, composite fillings, those plastic fillings, and you have like a dark outline around them, that can be the fungi or candida. It's hard yeah. to believe that that's not taught in dental school. I mean, your tongue is right there, smack in the middle of your mouth. Dental school is good to teach you how to not stick your drill in someone's eye. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, that's, listen, that's important to learn. Yeah. Right. Right. So what color should your tongue in an ideal world be? Just all pink, like a dog's? It should tongue? be like a healthy, not quite like a dog's, but a healthy, healthy pink color. It should be alive. Now, uh-huh. if you have any of the things that we mentioned and you have that coating on your tongue, that coloration. If it's a thick coating, it means it's chronic. It's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. So I I wrote my books basically in sequence. The first one was was Healthy Mouth, Healthy Body. And before we even get into that, I, I tell people flat out, if you get the books and you read them and you do what we say, if it doesn't add 10 years to your life, you write us and we'll give you a full refund. Now, wow. we say that somewhat tongue-in-cheek, because obviously you won't know, <laughs> but, but there's a lot of truth to that as well, mm-hmm. which is why, you know, we, we give specials out whenever we do radio shows. As far as holistic dentistry, people's teeth, um, let's just start off, why do people need to worry about their teeth so much? I mean, I, I know, and Kate knows, and you know, but uh, for some of the listeners that may be listening, why is it so important to keep our teeth healthy? Because it's not about your teeth. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just that simple. Right. What, what would you say if we said, you know, there's a way you can tell if you have a mo- vitamin or mineral deficiency or a compromised immune system? Um, and before you really get symptoms of problems, there's a way of, of telling that this is going to occur. Uh-huh. 
You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you have it. It's called your mouth. <laughs> so what, what people don't understand is, and maybe it's because dentistry and, and medicine diverged a while ago, but, but basically as dentist, dental school and med school are actually the same the first two years, are identical. And in many places, med and dental students attend the same classes, but then clinically it changes. We concentrate on the mouth and they do the rest of the body. Mm-hmm. And I think that's foolish because in Europe you really need an MD degree and then you go on to dentistry. Mm-hmm. It's a different ballgame. But that being said, the mouth is not this thing that, that's on a leash that you carry behind you. It's the, it's the first part of your digestive system. It's one of the most uh, sensitive parts of your body. So let's just say you uh, go to your dentist, and I'm sure people have gone and experienced having a hygienist tell you that you need to brush a little bit more, uh-huh. you need to floss a little bit more, you know, you still got plaque. Well, you could do that forever, but it's not going to change because what's going on has very little to do with you not brushing or you not flossing enough. Everybody in this country, well, maybe with the exception of some people, but we won't go into that, um, <laughs> right. uh, brushes and flosses or Brushes, at any rate, you know, floss is, is a little overrated, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That's another story for another time. At any rate, you know, you, you do keep your mouth clean, but you can do that forever, and nothing's going to change until someone or you, you, somebody points out to you that you know what? It's not really about your mouth. It's that the acid-base balance in your body is off, and your mouth is too acidic. And what happens when your mouth is too acidic is your saliva is acidic, so it starts precipitating out the minerals that are in saliva. They uh, precipitate out and go on your teeth and they start forming plaque. And while this is going on, the bad bacteria start um, developing or evolving, not evolving, but just starting to grow more because the environment is better for them than it is for the good guys. So you have either tooth decay or gum disease. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really... Little to do with your mouth. See, most of what we consider diseases of the, or, or the mouth aren't really. It's just symptoms of the body balance, such as tooth decay and gum disease. And, it's, and if you have that, it's an easy way to determine, you know, what your health is. Because the mouth, the eyes may be, as I say, the window to the soul. But many scientists would now say the mouth is the window to the body. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's what's going on with this. Now, dental problems basically come from four main areas. One is not getting the proper nutrients, not properly absorbing them, excessive stress or hormonal imbalances. Mm -hmm. So something is going on that you're getting these things. And the question becomes what? So let's just talk about gum disease as a starter. Okay. Great. Uh, And before we even get there, I'm going to just toss one thing out. 80% of our population has some form of gum disease. Wow. Which means that most of your listeners have some form of gum disease. Mm-hmm. Now, I have to preface that because you guys are in Southern California. So already I'm jealous. <laughs> because, you know, there's a real reason for this aside from, I mean, I live in Woodstock. It's a great area. Uh-huh. But uh, you guys can get fresh food all year. And that makes a difference. Yeah. We can, we can put that aside. But... Uh, just a couple of things. Um, Charles Mayo noted over 90 years ago, so this is not brand new. Hey, I just found out about this yesterday stuff. Right. Noted that people who, who keep their teeth live an average of 10 years longer than people who don't. People who and, keep all of their teeth, okay. Mm-hmm. And in the uh, Surgeon General's report in the year 2000, uh, I'm quoting this now. It said, the terms of oral and general health should not be interpreted as separate, separate entities. Oral health is integral to general health. This means that you cannot be healthy without oral health. We find that um, studies show that uh, poor dental health results in early death from any cause. Poor dental health. And that means cavities, root canals, all of it, right? Yeah, and there's there's reasons for that. We'll get into it. Okay. Uh, Avoiding periodontal disease is not just important for keeping your teeth, but for keeping the rest of your body healthy. So one question I have is, you know, we've heard a lot of people say that, you know, cancer is caused by root canals and things, and then there's, uh, you know, heart attacks are caused by 
root canals, but it's almost like you're saying the opposite thing in terms of where the actual root of the problem is. You're saying that you know if someone needs a root canal or something like that, they have really poor dental health. You're saying that the actual problem is in the starts in the body itself, and then it just sort of manifests itself to the teeth and to the gums and things, right? Well, we're saying both. Okay. Well, I'm saying both. Wow. Because uh, a study done at the University of Michigan reported that people with gum disease were much more likely to have cardiovascular disease, uh-huh. even after accounting for all other causes, such as smoking, cholesterol, triglycerides, and obesity. Still, you had a two and a, two and a half times greater chance of getting heart disease than if you didn't have gum disease. If your gums are infected, you triple the risk of having a stroke. And this is according to a, a 1998 study, wow. another one done at the University of Buffalo, where they surveyed not, almost 10,000 people, found that if you had gum disease, you were 35% more likely to have a stroke. And this goes on and on and on. So why is this happening? Okay, simple answer is because make it a little more complicated, it's that when you have gum disease, those bacteria that we talked about before are going in, in the mouth and they're underneath the plaque and they secrete toxins. And those toxins start destroying the bone. So you get inflammation. Mm-hmm. But it's not uncommon for people to come in and go, you know, my gums are receding. And it's not that the gums are receding, it's that they're getting bone loss and the gums are just following it down. Oh, okay, so, so there's actual bone loss occurring. Yeah, and yeah. what's happening with that is this is the, the body responds to this, those toxins, by putting out what's called C-reactive protein. Mm-hmm. And that's the body's response to inflammation. So periodontal disease, unfortunately, is one of the primary causes of inflammation in most people. Wow. And... Um, when you start predicting heart attacks, you really should measure the C-reactive protein because that's more uh, indicative of heart attacks than cholesterol. And it's actually the causative agent in heart disease. And it can be reduced by reducing periodontal disease because that periodontal disease is related to increased levels of C-reactive proteins. As I mentioned, the toxins which are generated as waste by periodontal bacteria get into blood, into the blood, and they trigger the liver to make more C-reactive protein. And where would that go? Now, now this is stuff that causes inflammation. Okay. It's going in your arteries, and it'll go into your heart. There was actually, um, this actually made the front page, I think it was 2008, I'm not sure, on Time Magazine. It just says, the secret killer, the surprising link between inflammation and heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases what you can do to fight it. And they actually and had this on Time Magazine. This is on the front cover. Wow. Wow, that's a bit that's a bit uh, shocking. shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So and there's lots of studies about this. Uh, U.S. public release, this is 2003, identified C-reactive protein as the cause of blood clot formation. Uh, New York Times had a health article where they talked about two studies suggest a protein has a big role in heart disease. Periodontal therapy lowers levels of heart disease. Um, cancer, chronic inflammation as a cause of tissue malignancy. Mm-hmm. So it's a very, it would be a very good thing for many people if they do have gum disease to get a blood test because you want to find out what your C-reactive protein level is. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's below one, then you have low risk okay. of problems. If it's from one to three, you have moderate risk. And if it's over three, I would check for cancer. Would they go to their mm-hmm. doctor and get that tested in a complete blood count, a CBC, or would they... Yeah, well, you could have your dentist do it, too. Oh, okay. oh, okay. So they could actually test that for you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, that being said, men with gum disease have a 63% high risk of getting pancreatic cancer. Oh, my God. And again, a study released in January 2007, Harvard-based study suggested mouth bacteria... And the body's attempt to fight them may produce carcinic chemicals which trigger disease. Yeah. So this goes on and on. Now, um, I can give you some herbs that will help your mouth, but before we get there. Actually, we need to take a short break here. Yeah, yeah. we're right up against yeah, a break. Let's and, get into that, though. Yeah, I want to get into that and at the next segment into uh, root canals, too. Mm. Um, that's All a right. 
huge issue for people. So we're with Dr. Victor Zinus, and his website is N-A-T-D-E-N-T dot com. And if you do forward slash lowercase E-H-R, you'll be able to see the books, his three e-books that he's got there. And don't forget to check that out. And uh, we're going to be right back with Dr. Zinus right after this break. Did you know that calcium is what eventually causes death to all mammals? Did you know that excess bad calcium can actually cause internal fibrosis, inflammation, and can over time shrink your internal organs, causing them not to work properly? Excess bad calcium has been related to heart disease, cancer, arthritis, heart attacks, strokes, digestive issues, cataracts, and just about every known disease. Best-selling author, researcher, and health motivator, David Wolf, has put together an incredible program that Kate and I love, and it will teach you exactly how to rid your body of this excess calcium so you can have the kind of body you had when you were a young kid. Imagine being flexible, having 20-20 vision, no joint pain, tons of energy, and feeling like you can conquer the world. The Longevity Now program can help you do just that. It's really, really good. So, David, this calcium issue really is a big deal, isn't it? It is a known thing in the natural healing profession, even in the medical profession. But let's say somebody gets on birth control pills. They have a very poor reaction to it. Their immune system malfunctions as a result of the hormone change in their body. All of a sudden, boom, they've got like rheumatoid arthritis. They're 25 years old. It's an immunological problem going on with a joint. So what is the connection between hormones, immune system, and calcification? And there is a very strong connection. It's been well noted in the literature for since the beginning of time. That age-related calcification, stress-related conditions, for example, arthritis, for example, coronary plaque formation, for example, kidney stones, gallstones, Alzheimer's, which in the old days was called brain sand. It's a calcification of the brain. Why do all these things have something in common, namely the formation of excess calcium in the body, and what can we do about it? And that is, as you know, a big focus of my research. And Like you said in your program, it is what eventually takes down all mammals, isn't it? It is, yeah, exactly. But like, for example, let's say you had a tortoise. The tortoises can live 500 years, some of them. But what finally gets them? It's arthritis finally gets a tortoise. And that's the great undertaker of all the noble life forms. They eventually get calcified. I get into every nuance of that, what it means, what the new medicine of the future is going to look like. Why calcification? How is it even happening? Should we take calcium supplements when we're dealing with calcification, which the answer is no, do not take calcium supplements. They're going to accelerate the calcification. And we just cover it from every angle. So I think it's going to give people a really cool breath of fresh air as to where we're going with our longevity understanding. And for example, arthritis does have something in common with cancer. They both have connected to an excess production of calcium in the tissues. It also has something to do with eczema and psoriasis, which when you scrape eczema and psoriasis off and you analyze it from a mineralogical perspective, it's excess calcium in the skin, lots of it, actually. It's like scale, right? It's, it's calcium. So it really does relate to everything. And does it also cause fibrosis and the shrinking of internal organs and things? Yeah, it can cause hardening of the organs. It can cause damage to the organs. And we know that from the kidney stones and gallstones and even what cataract. Like, what's a cataract in your eye? It's a formation of calcium in your eye. Hmm. You know, you start to see it sometimes in elderly people. They start having a fog in the eye, in the iris. And then the pupil, calcification, that's calcium again. This is not something I don't think we can have time to really break down right here, but I get into the understanding of what is calcium. You know, calcium is the end product of an alchemical lifting up of from hydrogen all the way into solid matter mass, which is calcium, that's used as an exoskeleton or skeleton or fibrous material by vertebrate organisms and even invertebrate organisms that can form the structural part of your body. But then when you pass from this planet, it's left over as a residue on the planet. If you're dealing with any kind of chronic long-term illness, or if you just want to turn back the clock many, many years, you really need to look into this Longevity Now program. It comes with tons of DVDs, audio programs, recipe courses, and a huge book with step-by-step -step daily protocols of exactly what to do to achieve massive results. To learn more about it, go to ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash longevity, or you can check it out in our store as well. Again, that's ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash longevity. 
100% listener supported. Extreme Health Radio. Opening minds and transforming lives worldwide. worldwide. Don't forget to join our thriving community for health tips, inspiration, and show updates. At ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash Facebook. Having a great time here with Dr. Victor Zinus, and his website is nat natdent dot com, and he is a great one. If you guys are interested in holistic health, and I mean his his whole practice doesn't just you know uh, go dentistry. to dentistry. He's very very well rounded in everything, even spirituality and all kinds of stuff that I've been researching on him. So he's just a really great resource. So um, I would highly recommend checking out his website, natdent.com, as well as if you do a forward slash uh, lowercase ehr, you can pick up these three books that he's got, Live a Longer Life, Healthy Body, or Healthy Mouth, Healthy Body, and Your Tongue Never Lies. So don't forget to check those out. And also, as the lady said, don't forget to follow us on Facebook if you want to keep up to date with all of our shows. I'd love to have you do that. So, Dr. Zinus, before the break, um, you were just about to say, we wanted to get into root canals during this segment as well, but you're about to mention some herbs. And even before that, you were going to give some advice on uh, what people can do. Uh, other than herbs, maybe? Other than herbs, I think, right? Yeah, uh, well... Think of it like this. I mean, we talked about gum disease, the link between heart attacks, cancer, and disease in general. Uh-huh. And and if you stop and think for a minute, that's all very interesting. But what if we did, talked about it this way? Forget about gum disease, okay? What if it wasn't a disease? What if it's just the first warning sign of the body being out of balance? Okay. That's really, to me, what it is. Hmm. And your mouth and, is simply just that, right? It's just a warning sign. Of right. what's going on internally. Exactly. So, and, and it's weird the way you, we, we treat that. You know, if you, let's say you had a cut on your pinky finger. Uh-huh. You went to your doctor and he said, you know, I have an infection on your pinky finger. We're going to cut it off. Would you do that? <laughs> right. Well, but, probably not. No. <laughs> so why would you go to a dentist who says, you know, uh, your gums are infected with gum, gum surgery. I'm like, what? And you remove, you're going to cut my gums off. Yeah, we're going to cut the healthy tissue off. Hmm. The unhealthy tissue, make it better. Like, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Not when you can just take a combination of um, oregano oil, 10 drops, clove oil, 5 drops, and olive oil, 5 drops, and mix that together and get one of those little proxy brushes from uh, a drugstore mm-hmm. and just go uh, take that and go in between your teeth with that, and you'll see the inflammation will get much better. What was the second oil? Clove oil, you said? Yeah, uh, start with oregano oil. That's the most antibacterial. Okay. okay. And you use a mixture, uh, use 10 drops of that and then 5 drops of clove oil and 5 drops of olive oil because the clove oil by itself is strong. It'll, it'll kind of burn. And you can get food-grade options of these oils and then you can just drop them on your toothbrush? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. And then you just brush like that every night? Yeah, you could do that or you could put them on those little proxy brushes. Those are brushes that little, you can buy in a drugstore. They go in between your teeth. And they um, will will get all the uh, debris out in between there as well. Okay. And all of a sudden, you'll see your, your gums are getting a little bit better. You also have to change your diet. We, we can talk about diet after we, we get through with root canals. <laughs> so think about, as I said, think about a gum disease as the beginning of nutritional deficiencies, first sign. Think about all den- dentistry like that. Aside from, well, I was going to say, aside from just eating garbage, but the fact is, if you're eating garbage, you're nutritionally deficient. Mm-hmm, right. you know, if you spend a lot of time thinking, and, and unfortunately, we have a large segment of the population that thinks fast food restaurants are religious experiences, <laughs> and they have, to, they have to learn, no, they're not. Not only that, but they may be fast, but that's certainly not food. That's not food. You know, and if it were up to me, I'd have every one of those clothes, and I'd have Ronald McDonald taken out and shot, <laughs> because you know, none of that stuff has anything to do with health. There's a great study which illustrates this. Then at the University of Alabama, they took 160 pregnant women, divided it in half, and they found that the um, women who had tooth decay were getting, uh, having more problems giving birth 
giving birth to lower birth weight babies, and those babies also developed slower and were more prone to disease than the women who didn't have cavities. So just having Why? the cavities themselves is causing all these traumatic birth problems. No, no. Think about it for a minute. Uh, based on what we're saying, it's not that the cavities causing it. It's because they have cavities because they're nutritionally deficient. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. And their diet's not good. You know, uh, we have a place in Florida, and we went down, and my wife was astounded because one of the uh, counter, you know, the checkout people, mm-hmm. her front tooth was missing. Oh. And she's just, how can anybody walk around like that? There's a lot of people who walk around like that, A, because they can't afford care. That's a whole other story. But the fact is that her diet, for whatever reason, was such that she's losing teeth. And we're talking about someone who's in their late 20s, maybe early 30s. Oh, man. You know? So you, you get a lot of that. And these are people who are nutritionally deficient. And you can see that down the road, if things doesn't change, other things are going to happen and none of them are going to be good. Wow. So going back to your essential oils and the toothbrush, would someone brush their teeth like that and then would they leave that in their mouth or would they rinse that out or how does No, you rinse it out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rinse it out. You don't, need, you don't need to go nuts over this. You just need to do it and, and get things done properly. Now, there's, there's a lot of other herbs you can use. Uh-huh. We mentioned um, cloves. Uh, you can use garlic and propolis, which is a nice combination because it's antibacterial and antimyositic. Okay. And so would someone buy those and use them topically? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All of this you can just put on your toothbrush or a, a rubber tip or that... Um, proxy brush. Uh, proxy brush. And, and just use it that way. You can make a tea with licorice, uh, one to one and a half teaspoons with a half a cup of water, and mix it with a, a teaspoon of uh, Simcue foil. And that act, that's very anti-inflammatory. Or you can use lemon balm, four teaspoons of the powder with a cup of water, and that's antiviral, antibacterial. Oh. Um, chamomile and mullein are good mm-hmm. combinations. Echinacea, golden seal. Mm-hmm. We used to use a combination in my office years ago of uh, echinacea, golden seal, and myrrh. And I tell my patients, this is going to taste terrible. It's going to turn your teeth yellow, <laughs> but it's going to get rid of... Your gum disease, you know, this is the early 80s, and, you know, the better ways now, and people would do it, and boom, got better. Wow. Um, or ways to reduce tooth decay, get alfalfa, dandelion, and horsetail. Um, it, adds, it adds minerals. And, and so if you think about what we're really talking about here, is just adding things to your diet that are probably lacking in most people. Uh-huh. Yeah, these are things people can add in, just as, like, teas, couldn't they? Sure. Yeah, just make a tea every night, and you mm-hmm. can go online or go to your health food store, buy these things in bulk, and make a tea the night before and have it ready in the morning, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah, you could do a lot like that. Now, see, you guys are excluded from this, but let's just say that you have, like, the best diet. It's all organic food, and it's, and it's, it's just the best diet, and you're living. We have absolutely no stress in your life and no pollution. Mm-hmm. The question becomes, how old is your food? How old is the food? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Think about it. How old is your food? Well, see, you can go every day and get food that's picked the day before. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah. most people can't. Most people get food. It's not like you go into the, the um, health food store and say, oh, Justin's here, and they run out right in the backyard. They pick it, and they hand it to you. <laughs> right, you right. Know, it's usually like a minimum of a week old. Uh-huh. Right. So what do you think you're getting nutritionally from a week we go, we go food. If you're lucky, you're getting 40% of what you need. And usually these things are picked when they're not even ripe yet too, right? Yeah, we won't even go into that. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they pick them when they're not ripe and then they're yeah. three weeks before us. So that, right, so let's, yeah. let's just say this is organic. It's, it is ripe, but it's still going to take a week to get to you. Mm-hmm. Right, and you're right. getting 40% of what you need. So if you're not taking supplements, to counteract that and to to build up your immune system and to give you what you need, um, you're going to be nutritionally deficient. And if you start thinking about, gee, 80% of our population, and with the 80%, it's a lot of people, 80% of a population having gum disease, you might even even be a little weird and say, you know, it's normal to be sick. It's those 20% that are weird because they're healthy. (laughs) They're what? (laughs) You know. (laughs) Uh, but, But that seems to be where we're at right now. 
So what we want to do is build up awarenesses. You know, you asked me about the books before, and the first book I wrote was, was Healthy Mouth, Healthy Body. Because to me, it was like, yeah, if your mouth is healthy, your body's going to be healthy. Uh-huh. And um, that was not picked up to be made into a movie. So, you know, right, let, me, <laughs> let me try my second book, yeah. Living a Longer Life. You know, hey, if you do this, you'll live longer. You know, and coupled with the Healthy Mouth, Healthy Body book, you really can get a lot of stuff for yourself that you will live longer, no question about it. And then the third one I wrote was The Tongue Never Lies, because, hey, here's a great way you can monitor what you're doing. And we have pictures in that book that you would not believe. People are going on detox programs, and their tongues look like somebody's doormat. Oh, gosh. And then two to three weeks later, I mean, you can see some of these on the website, but two to three weeks later, they're nice and pink, just from, you know, changing your diet. And that's only two to three weeks. I mean, that's amazing. You can achieve that much in two yeah. to three weeks. Yeah. So, doctor, is the tongue scraping a total joke? I mean, obviously, the inner terrain is it's going to keep coming out, and you're going to keep scraping your tongue. But what do you have to say about tongue scraping? I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan. No, I mean, it's, you feel like doing it, do it, but it's not. It, it basically what you're doing is you're getting the crud off that's on your mouth. Right. Okay, that's very nice, and then you go have your day. But wait, wait, I want to. As you take, as you scrape, I want to go and tap you on your shoulder and go. Why are you doing that? And you say, "Well, I'm getting the crud off." And I go, "Great, but why are you getting the crud in the first place? Right, How right. about we address that? Right. So you don't get crud that you have to scrape off. Right. That's what I was thinking you were going to say. So we have a couple well, more minutes. <laughs> makes a lot more sense. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have a couple more minutes here before the uh, the segment, and maybe we can start on the root canals things. Take a break and continue on. But why do you think so many people need root canals? It's such a huge thing. Everyone seems to have them. Um, because people are nutritionally deficient. I mean, think about what we're talking about. Eighty percent of our population is some form of gum disease. Uh-huh. Okay, so immediately, from my point of view, they're not getting what they need to have weakened immune systems. What that means is it, the second thing that means to me is you're going to get tooth decay. Mm-hmm. You, you have your choice. You can get gum disease and maybe fit into a heart attack or get tooth decay and wind up using um, or getting um, root canal teeth. Mm-hmm. Now, there's also uh, other things with this. The, the problem with dentistry is we don't heal. I, I think of myself as a healer, but mostly what we do is we fix stuff, mm-hmm. which is why uh, if we get a chance, we should talk about acupuncture and how each teeth that when you have work done activates meridians and they stay active because we don't heal them. We, we can never get a tooth back to normal. Mm-hmm. If you were a rat, we could do that with stem cells now. But <laughs> we're, we're probably 10, 15 years away from putting stem cells in people to regrow teeth. Yeah, I've heard, so, them, I've heard of people trying to regrow the little pulp of the roots yeah, and, and things. Uh, they're, uh, they're starting to do that now. If you need a root canal, they can... The research is showing that you can put stem cells in the tooth and regrow the nerve and the blood supply, and then you you wouldn't need a root canal. Okay. Maybe, because once that's done, like, okay, what are you going to put on top of that? We don't know how to replace the enamel or the dentin, Mm -hmm. and those are the two materials that are the, the hardest materials in your body, and they protect that nerve and blood supply. I'm surprised people aren't walking around with a, a mouthful of no teeth. You know <laughs> right? what I mean? With all this uh, nutritional deficiency, I mean, if right. people like us are eating some of our food out of our garden, not much of it these days, but if we're eating some of our food like that with good soils and stuff and all of the food we buy is organic, and if we are nutritionally deficient, which I'm sure yeah. there's a possibility that's the case, um, if we're eating as well as we're eating, I can't imagine the amount of nutritional deficiency that's happening in the average person eating bread and white flour products and things. Well, that's why there's a lot of dentists in the country. Yeah. There's a reason for it. <laughs> and I have to say, even, even conventional dentistry, which, which doesn't do any of this stuff, they're just busy repairing things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, after three years, I gave up dentistry because I felt it was silly. Because all we were doing, we were repairing stuff. Mm-hmm. And people would come in and it was like, You'd stick your finger in the dam to plug the little leak, and then they'd come in again, and you'd stick another finger in the other other place to do it. And all of a sudden, you run out of fingers and toes, 
and and the same problem is going on. And I said, "This is crazy. This is this is you know, there's got to be a better way." Right. And I couldn't find one at the time, so I dropped out, and became a therapist, and worked with Improv Theater Group. And I found through my therapy practice that I noticed people were making changes based on nutritional work, and I and I was making changes in my own life at that time. I was eating a lot more organically, and. I found some books written in the 30s and 40s and early 50s by dentists that were talking about all this. Mm. I said, gee, this is the way I want to practice. So I went back to my dental school and said, can you guys show me how to set up a practice like this? Oh, my <laughs> God. And they said, get lost. You know, <laughs> nutrition has absolutely no place in dentistry. Go away. It's you silly stuff. Don't bother us with that. Wow. Mm. And what almost story. went to chiropractic school. But... uh I started taking a lot of chiropractic courses and got certified in acupuncture and things like that and found that, uh, gee, I, I could set up a dental practice where not only we're using non-toxic materials, but we can work with vitamins and, and do all these things. And just we started doing that and never looked back. Wow. This is a great time to take a break. Very interesting. After the break, I want to talk a little bit about some of the acupuncture things mm-hmm. and uh, some of prevention things people can do. Don't forget to check out his website again. It's N-A-T-D-E-N-T. And if you do forward slash lowercase E-H-R for Extreme Health Radio, you can check out the three books that he has to give away, or not to give away, but to sell to you. Really, really good stuff. So make sure to check that out. And we'll be right back with Dr. Victor Zinus right after this break. The history of heat therapy dates back over 2,400 years. And it was Hippocrates who said... Give me the power to produce fever, and I will cure all disease. This FDA-approved medical device called the Biomat is a mat that you can lay on, read on, sleep on, do yoga on, sit on, and it can be used on office chairs, massage tables, and the like to help the body heal itself. It's inlaid with 30 pounds of healing crystals using amethyst and a rare black tourmaline producing negative ions in a healing electrical field. These healing crystals help to restore cellular health by replacing electrons to the atoms as well as penetrating deep into the body by four to six inches. What can the Biomat do for you? It'll improve your skin, burns as many calories as if you went jogging for 30 minutes. It improves the immune system by up to 40% or more, reduces stress and fatigue, removes toxins, lowers cholesterol, relieves pain, revitalizes cellular metabolism it improves cell channels to deliver nutrients and oxygen to every one of your cells it activates over 3,000 enzymes and even a Harvard medical study showed cancer cells die at over 42 degrees Celsius it reduces stress hormones by up to 78 percent it allows your body to produce heat shock proteins which increases endorphins NK cells T-cells and lymphocytes. It's very, very low EMF and it's got a 17-layer technology. Dr. Mark Circus is the director of the International Medical Veritas Association. Uh, explain to us more about these biomats. These biomats are these far infrared mattresses. You lay on them or you sleep on them or both. You do you know, very heavy treatments during the day and at night you, you know, sleep at you know, just a nice comfortable temperature. These biomats are like these love machines, comfort machines, and healing machines. Because what they do is they just radiate out light, far infrared light, and you can radiate yourself all night long while you're sleeping when you're not doing anything else. And what happens is this light penetrates the body and turns to heat. And the first thing that happens when you bring your core body temperature up one degree is your immune system strength increases by 40, 50%. They feel when you lay down on them, you know, you guys know you have one. So it's like the feeling is so good. It's like being in the cuddling with a lover, your wife or husband. It's just warmth and comfort. How are you using biomats for patients in your clinics? 
you know, the, the cancer treatment using heat is very aggressive, meaning during the day, you sandwich yourself in between two of them, turn it on to high heat, mm -hmm. and bake the cancer. The cancer will die before you will. No, this is, you know, That's you can awesome. go to England and spend the $20,000 and use microwave a cancer out of existence. Uh, these biomats basically do the same thing. You know, radiation therapy for cancer is really a solid idea. Unfortunately, oncologists use the wrong radiation. They use radiation that kills you. This biomat uses radiation that can save your life and make your life more comfortable, keep you warm in the cold, and help take care of your kids and all, you know, the list doesn't end. Yeah, because isn't there some sort of temperature at which cancer cells will right. start dying? Right, and it's below the temperature that human cells will die. So you really like this biomat far infrared technology, don't you? But it's, it's really, it strengthened me. Well, now the kids are addicted to it. You know, they fight on who's going to sleep on it at night. And it changed, not only changed my life, but it changed my medical practice and my books. This is a great machine for anybody who lives in the cold during the winter. Instead of heating a big house, you just heat yourself. With the bottom line, it brings good feelings. Just lay on this biomat and it gives the strength back. I can attest to that indeed. Kate and I love ours and we think you will too. Learn more about these amazing biomats at extremehealthradio.com forward slash biomat. Or you could check them out in our store as well. Again, that's extremehealthradio.com forward slash biomat. Free, free, free. All free shows, all the time on Extreme Health Radio. Opening minds and transforming lives worldwide. Join our community today. Sign up to our email list and instantly get our free gift to you, along with loads of inspirational content and cutting-edge tips to help change your life. At ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash subscribe. All right, we're having a great time here with Dr. Victor Zinus from natdent.com. And as the lady said, uh, don't forget to sign up to our newsletter list. We are giving away a great, great ebook called Lessons from the Miracle Doctors, which sells for $20 on Amazon. So uh, you get that for free. You and might it, learn a thing or two like we're learning right now. Yeah, it's Jeez. really great. It's 177 pages with tons of information about how to do cleansing and uh, natural healing protocols, all kinds of good stuff. So don't forget to check that out. And also, don't forget to check out N-A-T-D-E-N-T -E forward slash E-H-R to check out the three e-books that Dr. Victor Zinus has, Live a Longer Life, Healthy Mouth, Healthy Body, Your Tongue Never Lies, and some a bunch of other information as well that you can get there for a really good deal. So, uh, Dr. Zinus, before the break, we were having a good discussion. And uh, I think in this next segment, it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about some of the um, acupuncture mm -hmm. that you talked about and the meridian systems of the body and how they all interconnect with the teeth and things. All right. Here's how it works. Each meridian contains a primary organ and several, several secondary ones. Uh huh. And they all share... Um, a finite amount of energy. So if one particular organ on the meridian is weakened by bacteria or toxins or whatever, then the other organs on that meridian share energy with the weak one until it heals. Okay, okay so somehow they share that energy. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So here's the problem. We never heal teeth. We never heal Which means that the energy is always going from the other organs on that meridian to mm -hmm. the tooth try and heal it. So, so what let's happens? say you have a filling on a canine tooth. Uh -huh. It's not uncommon for people to come in showing their tongues being yellow, yellowish green because the canine tooth is related to the liver gallbladder system and that color is related to liver gallbladder. Uh -huh. So unless you know that, even though you're eating well and think you're doing the right things, unless you know about that connection and know that you need to add a little bit more because that system is, in this case, liver gallbladder, is essentially weakened. and You want to build your liver gallbladder system up doing detox programs, etc. You'll always have some sort of energetic problem, which may down the road become 
more physical. So let's just go through which teeth relate to what. Okay. The, the front four teeth on the top and the bottom are related to your general system, primarily the ovaries, the testicles, kidney and the bladder, the adrenals and the pineal gland. The canine teeth are related to the gallbladder, the liver, the pituitary gland, and the eyes. That's why they're also called eye teeth. Okay. <laughs> the large intestine is uh, the next one, and that is the two premolars on the top and the two molars on the bottom. Okay. And that's related to the large intestine, the thymus, the pancreas, and the lungs. Okay. And that's an interesting one because a lot of, uh, many times, before we go through the rest of this, we find people come in with pain in the lower first molar tooth and we'll take pictures, do an exam, and, and the, the tooth is, is perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. And the next question becomes, how's your digestion? And the answer is invariably, it was not so good. So we would send them to a, an acupuncturist to go have that worked on. Is it possible? Right, after a while, the pain goes away. Is it possible for the teeth to uh, reflex to different, not just organs in your body, like you said, with the colon and things and different glands, but is it possible to have teeth relate to different parts of your body, like joints, like your knee or your ankle or anything like that, too? Um, the, the short answer is yes. Okay. Just moving on with this for a minute. Yeah. If your, um, your upper molars and your lower premolars are the stomach thyroid, and that's related to the kidneys, pancreas, parathyroid, thyroid, and, and uh, mammary glands, the breast cancer, is related to these teeth being out of balance. Uh-huh. And then, uh, and this one, uh, I hate mentioning this one, because how many people listening have had their wisdom teeth removed? You can raise your hands, and you'll, you'll see there's a lot of them. Yeah, I, anyway, I have myself, yeah. That's not so good, because that, it's related to the heart and the adrenal glands and blood pressure. Interesting. Okay, so blood pressure, heart, and adrenal glands for all four wisdom teeth. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Okay. And what do you do now if those teeth have been removed? You punt. You punt. Um, really, what you have to do is just know what's being affected by it. So what you would want to do is take supplements, let's say that would, would build up your heart, build up your adrenal glands. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a, there's a ton of stuff out there. You just look up whatever you want to do. There's millions of them. Okay, so the idea then is if you have had teeth removed is to figure out where they correspond as far as the organs and glands and then start working on those glands. Yeah, now, not only removed, this is just you know, also if you have a filling. Oh, right. Anything, okay. Because it's not healed, it's just fixed. I see, okay. And, and 90% of the filling materials out there are somewhat toxic. That's the whole other story. Yeah. So, so you've got to deal with that. We're not, I'm even talking about mercury fillings, which are totally toxic and shouldn't shouldn't be allowed in, in human beings at, on any level. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the ones, that, the white ones, the composites, not so great for you. 90% of what we use in my office is, is porcelain. It's porcelain. It's, it's completely non-reactive. And, and so the it, materials that we do use, the composites we do use, we've had tested. Because I see a lot of people who've had cancer. <laughs> and, you, you know, with those people, you want to make sure you don't do anything that's going to compromise their immune system. So they have you, enough going on. Yeah, yeah. If, if people have tooth issues, like they think they have maybe a cavity or th- or something like that, the first thing they should do is find a holistic dentist in their area. I uh, would. Okay, and then start. Um, what are some things people can do to take care of their teeth on a daily basis? Obviously, flossing, but and the oils and the oils. Do you recommend baking soda and things like that? Oh, big baking soda peroxide. Baking soda. That's an old uh, method it's called the key key plan, and it's uh, it's been used for. Uh, a, a long time just to alkalize your mouth. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Mm-hmm. You can even use salt. Just brush your teeth with that. Okay. Uh, the key really is to have a good diet. And, and this is not new stuff. Like I said, Weston Price wrote a book, Physical Degeneration and Nutrition, in 1930s. Uh-huh. And the book was based on uh, his travels around the world where he went to check to see what, what goes on in primitive societies. At that point which really hasn't changed much. The United States, one of the leading industrial countries in the world, has a decay rate of between 20 and 25%. You know, you mentioned, like everybody and his mom, uh, have root canals. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you got a decay rate of 20 to 25%, you're going to wind up with root canals. But he wanted to see, wh- what exactly is the story with that? What, what happens with primitive people? Mm-hmm. So he went all around the world, 
and took a gazillion pictures, and he found that he would uh, check out tribes like the Maasai in uh, Africa, and they had a large, largely meat diet, and they had a decay rate of about 6%. And he'd check out the vegetarian tribes in regions, and they had a decay rate of also between 5 and 6%. And he found the healthiest tribes were like the Dinkas, which is a Sudanese tribe in the Nile, and they had a mixed diet, some some meat, and we talk about meat, we're also talking about a lot of insects, mm-hmm. which is one of the healthiest forms of, pro- of protein mm. for humans are termites. Really? Now, yeah, now we have a cultural bias about eating stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you like your stuff packaged. <laughs> right. You know, and, 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 you know from uh, cows and things like that. But, it, you know, you, you, if you're going to eat meat, you're much better off eating fish than uh, the meat that's, that's uh, raised. Just a different animal. But, but insects make up a large part of, of the diet. And stop and think about it. It makes a lot more sense because human beings, especially are omnivores. They're not vegetarians. They'll eat anything that crosses their path. Uh-huh. But hunting is not so successful with, with primitive people like Homo habilis uh, lived two million years. You know, and if a rabbit came by, yeah, they'd whack it with a rock. But to go hunt reindeer or deer or buffalo or whatever, uh, if they were lucky, they got uh, a kill maybe one out of ten times. Mm-hmm. Mostly, we got food from the women who were the gatherers. And what are you going to find? You'll find termites. You know, you bring, you know, the whole tribe would come and everybody would sit and eat them. Or root vegetables or eggs. You know, a lot of things. And when you have a diet like that, it, it's a great diet. It's, it's actually better than, than most diets today. So that makes a, a, a big difference for people. You know, the way you're eating. And he published his studies, and you could get the book now. It's sold by the Price Pottinger Foundation. What do you make of the mercury uh, that people are talking about with Fukushima and the fish and things? Is that an issue for people? Um, I don't think the mercury in fish is so bad. I think the mercury in silver fillings is a lot is a lot worse. It's a lot worse. We don't even call them silver fillings. We call them mercury fillings. Mercury, yeah. yeah, yeah that's they're... pretty much what they are. Yeah. Right. And um, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. According to the World Health Organization, mercury is a prime so, uh, amalgam, so silver fillings they're called, a prime source of mercury exposure. There's over 180 million Americans have mercury fillings. Oh and each one releases between 3 and 17 micrograms of mercury every day. It's released and it forms methyl mercury, which is highly toxic, uh-huh. and it, it's absorbed through the oral tissues and the air passages and transported to the brain and other tissues. And if any one of you think that this is a good thing because your dentist said it is, try this. Go get a mercury thermometer and walk into a public school and drop it so that the mercury breaks open and watch what happens. <laughs> you know what happens? They send, a, they send a hazmat team to clean it up. Right. We're talking about you know 20 drops of something. So why on God's earth would you want to have that in your mouth? <laughs> Plus, a, a, the American Dental Association Association has, has mandated that in 2014, every dental office has what's called a mercury separator. So if you're removing mercury or putting it in, the excess has to go into a special separator machine, and that's stored as a toxic waste. <laughs> so, you know, think about this for a minute. Talk about stupidity. <laughs> right. in, in a year and a half, or rather, in a year, we have to treat this as a toxic substance. What about now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what about now? It's not like they're changing these things. Right. You know, all of a sudden it's January and they're toxic, but meanwhile, because it's November, they're good. <laughs> you know, pretty people crazy. I mean, you know, why wasn't this done 20 years ago? Well, it's really, cra- we certainly knew about it. We knew about this in the 18th century. It's nuts how people don't think about this and put two and two together. Because even in the dental offices, when they re- when they take out the uh, mercury fillings from people, don't they have to package them up and they have a special person come who's protected and all? Of that. Yeah. Well, it, it depends if somebody knows what they're doing. Yeah. If not, um, then they just roll them out. I was wow. Uh, just for the heck of it, last week I went on the web to see about. Uh, some of the uh, phenols that gas out from a lot of the uh, composite materials that we have, the white filling materials. And I happened to come across a, a dental uh, website. It just 
went on it. And the guy will say, he's talking about mercury slings and how they're safe, and he's put them in his kids and his wife, and he has some. Uh-huh. And I thought to myself, this man's a moron. You know, in this day and age where, where they're completely banned in Europe, and, most, and when dentists are using them, they're supposed to have, particularly in California, uh, a sign on the office that says, this office uses mercury fillings and we do not recommend them for kids or for pregnant women. But wow. for the rest of it, it's okay. It's like if you're a guy, it's totally safe to use. <laughs> yeah. Like, where, where, where do people come off with this stuff? You know, I lecture about this. I don't have to stop it. Like, my God, what are these people smoking? You know, but this is what they would come out with, you know, and it's supposed to be okay. Oh, well, for who? Right. Hey, doctor, I have one quick question. I don't know how often you see this, but I am have a strange mouth. What about people like me who have, I have a couple teeth that are completely inside out. They're backward. They grew in completely backward. So when I smile, the, what's supposed to be on the inside of my tooth is on the outside. How important is that with health and the placement of teeth and how they grow in and things like that? I think it's kind of cool. I'd like to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever met anybody with my kind of issue? <laughs> uh, actually, no. That's why I'd like to meet you. You're kidding. Uh, th- that being said, uh, as long as it doesn't bother you, mm-hmm. it's fine. Okay. Uh, or- orthodontics. The kids tried- that would either be orthodontics or what we call veneers. Right, right. And, and you, it, it's not bothering you. You don't need that. You know, uh, Years ago when veneers first started, I had a woman patient who got into a big fight with me because she wanted veneers and and i said no you know you keep the healthy you just don't need them and she said listen i'm a singer and every time i open mm. my mouth i'm embarrassed mm. she uh-huh. got her veneers in three weeks I bet. <laughs> I bet. if they're convinced to do it they're gonna do it right? well with me yeah. it was so funny all these i had seven years on and off of orthodontics and they tried to flip those suckers around a few times and they were so stubborn they go right back so finally we let them go just let <laughs> them yeah, leave them alone. Ah, that's funny okay so that doesn't necessarily mean it's connected to a major health problem like you would with a cavity or anything No, not, like at, all, not at all. Huh. It's makes your teeth are backwards. So, That's interesting. So, Dr. Zions, <laughs> now, I know we're... thought, you know, since you brought that up, yeah. that maybe your teeth are the right way, but your entire body is backwards? <laughs> <laughs> maybe my brain, maybe my head. Everything is backwards. <laughs> you know what? I've never thought about it like that, but I'm going uh. to be pondering that all day today. <laughs> That's great. Um, Dr. Zions, I know we're wrapping up here. I um, wanted to ask you one final thing. Uh, is there a relation to mineral mineralization of teeth and how they grow in? Because as you know, and as Weston Price has pointed out, that uh, especially people in like America, Europe, and all these modern Western nations have really crowded mouths. Mm. Does the amount of minerals that a mother gets during pregnancy and the child growing up too, does that have a direct impact on their the width of their mouth and things? Absolutely. That was, okay. the, that was the second thing he found in his studies, okay. that all these primitive tribes had great arches, no crowding, you know, no, no need for orthodontic work. Now, he also found that they also didn't have heart attacks and blood, and brush, blood pressure disease and very little cancer. Interesting. But he was focusing on teeth. So that became a side issue for him. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, good stuff. Well, thank oh. you, doctor, for being on. I feel like we need to do more segments with you because... You know, we could talk for an hour or two just on any one of the points that I have written down in my notes here. So uh, maybe this is a good introduction for people to your work. And so those three ebooks are available for people, right? On natdent.com forward slash EHR. Is that correct? That's correct. And we um, try to give them, uh, we have a bonus that we do. If you, you get the books, see, I want the information out there. I mean, as we, we talked earlier, I can, I can, Spend a half an hour with someone I can add, I can add 10 years to life. It's what I do. Mm-hmm. But how many people am I going to see in a day? 10, 12 people? If I right. push myself. But you start getting this out and people read this and go, you know, this guy's, these, these are good books. They're helpful. It's an easy read. And, and I wrote them so you don't have to be a physician or anybody to, to understand the books. They're simple. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want people to read them and say, you know, you ought to get these. These are great books. But we do a special just to encourage it. If you order the three books, we give you a bonus. Uh, it's a dental information kit for patients. They're PDFs, and it talks about acupuncture, periodontal disease, tongue diagnosis, root canals, dental primer, how to stay healthy, color therapy, magnets and herbs, and it's a $55 retail package for $35. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's so a good deal. That hugely helps. Yeah, so there's eight patient guides that you have that go along with that that you just throw in for free. This is really yeah. cool. Yeah. Hmm. 
Interesting stuff. Doing some so, pretty amazing things. Yeah, thank you for being on today. And um, is there anything you want to close out with? Any new things you're working on? Anything like that? Uh, I think we just mentioned it. You know, we really want to start. This is the first year we're doing. I, I've done many, many radio and TV shows, but this is the first year we're really starting to promote the books and get them out there because it's time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, particularly with what's going on with, with health in this country, it's just it's kind of a joke. <laughs> and if if you do the things that that you can do, I think you've got the right to have a healthy, happy life. Yeah, who doesn't and, like and, that? And hopefully these things will point you in the right direction. Well, this is good stuff. So check out his website, Victor Zinus, is Dr. Zinus's website, N-A-T-D-E-N-T dot com. And if you want to check out the special of those ebooks that you can read on your Kindle um, and any of your other devices, computer, you can go to N-A-T-D-E-N-T dot com forward slash E-H-R and check out the patient guides and all that stuff. So good stuff. Thanks, Doc, for being on today. Really appreciate it. No, a pleasure. Okay, we'll keep in touch soon, okay? Okay. Thanks, Doc. You too. Thanks, Doc. Bye. Bye-bye. So, Dr. Victor Zinus. Great guy, huh? Great guy. Yeah. I feel like every single guest we have on, we keep learning something new, even if we've already had other dentists prior. You know, I thought it was cool how he gave all those herbs, too. Remember he was talking talking about the herbs that you can put on your Uh toothbrush to get rid of uh, gum disease? You're right. Receding gums and things? That was really... uh, It sounds really imperative to get those kinds of... um, I don't know the word. Combinations between your teeth, like he was talking about. Like actually getting... I'm not just brushing the surface, but getting between. Yeah. With one of those proxy brushes and things. What's that? I don't know. I've never heard of a proxy brush, but I I want to go check it out now. Is a proxy brush... Is that similar to like uh, the kind that I use to floss, like those little flossing pick things? I don't think so. I'm picturing it more like a little thing with little bristles that you can really get in there or something. Wow. I have no idea. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, right? I liked what he was saying. And too, that whole tongue chart thing was pretty interesting. Or the whole... What was he saying? If you're, the tip of your tongue is red, it mm-hmm. something to do with your colon health? Or was that your heart? Oh, I'm going to have to re-listen to this episode. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's so much information thrown at you. Wow. I thought it was interesting about the colors coming onto the tongue uh, uh, might you know correlate to those different problems in your body. Oh, yeah. Different disease or uh, you know if you have a green green stuff going on, it might be your liver or... Yeah. Um, and I thought it was interesting too because I've always wondered about the tongue scraping. It, it It's like anything else. Um, you know, you scrape it off, it goes away and comes back again. It's not like you have to obviously treat the internal train to really yeah. get to the root of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, it makes sense to, to want to get rid of that, you know, at the root level, you know, right, right. not just scrape it off. But the more you learn, the more you want to get to the very um, root of it. To though, the root of the problem. And we talked a little bit about the root canals. That was good. That was good. I could spend a whole show with him just on root canals. Oh, you gosh, know? I know. I mean, there's so many questions that I could ask him about that. Root canals. I wonder I wonder what the percentage of people is or are that have a root canal. Probably. Do you have any or no? I have one. You have one? Do you have one? I do. Hmm. Yeah. When we are going to go to... We're going to try... I don't know. We're considering going back to Dr. Stewart Nunley. Mm-hmm. If we can get over there. And what is what? What part of Texas is he in? Uh, no, uh, uh, Marble, Marble Falls. Falls. Marble Falls. And then now we're considering going to Dr. Javier Morales. Right. In Mexico. In Mexico, who was recommended to us from Dr. David Jubb and Doc and uh, David Wolf. Yeah. Of all people. <laughs> <laughs> Heard nothing but good things about both of those. Yeah, right. So, and we've been to Stuart Nunley. So. Yeah, Doctor Javier Morales. But man, I mean, Doctor Zinus. I think we might have to have him on again. Oh, I'd love that. Um, because he's got all kinds of stuff. We did barely got into acupuncture. Oh gosh, that's a whole other. That's a whole show there. It's more than an hour. That's a whole lot of show. And let's see. I had on my list of notes to talk to him about uh, fluoride. We didn't get to that. Oh, that's right. I wanted to talk to him about magnets because mm-hmm. he has a whole protocol on how to use magnets with and, your teeth, huh? For mm-hmm. your teeth health, for, yeah. for your overall health. Hmm. Yeah, Never heard and, of such uh, a thing. Kinesiology. Oh yeah. And I wanted to talk to him about color therapy. We didn't even get to that very. Oh. I mean, he's a really well-rounded guy. Wow. Yeah. So color. Wow. Color therapy. I've heard of color therapy, and it keeps coming up, but I have no idea what it actually is. Do you? 
I don't know because I know who talks about Adam Bergstrom, one of our guests. Oh, right. He talks about color and how that affects the energies because the color, I guess, is just a vibration of, of energy, right? Huh. It's just a yeah, everything is apparently. Yeah, it's just a vibration. So I have a girlfriend that's done the color therapy, and she swears it's one of the <laughs> most healing things she's done. So I'm interested. What does she do? Do you know? I, I don't know. Actually, it's so funny. Every time she and I get together, we have so much to talk about, uh-huh. and we're both on the same page with all this stuff that half the things I have wanting to talk to her going into the conversation are just, you know, I come home and I'm like, we didn't even touch on that. (laughs) So I don't know. I want to get into that with her though. That is cool. I know. So if you guys are interested in his books, I would highly recommend his eBooks that he uh, has for you guys as Extreme Health Radio listeners. Um, I have all three of them myself and it comes up with, I think about eight patient guides too which is really, really helpful stuff. So uh, if you want to go pick those up and check out more of his work, you can go to N-A-T-D-E-N-T forward slash E-H-R for Extreme Health Radio forward slash E-H-R on his website. And you'll be able to see um, those eBooks. I think they're 39 bucks. Okay. And we picked them up before the show and um, good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Not bad for a lot of info. Yeah. And you can read them on your Kindle and all that stuff. So... Um, and also, if you guys have any thoughts or comments or questions about this show, you can go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash 173 and post your comments there. And I'm leaving the comments open so the people in the future can, you know, add their two cents and add to the conversation about what they've learned about whatever show they've listened to. So, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's great. 173 is the show. And. Um, if you guys could, it would be we would be so grateful if you could pass this show on to your friends. Anybody you know who has teeth issues. And who doesn't. And who doesn't these days, right? <laughs> right. So check. Um, if you could do that, that would be really helpful for us. And um, let's see, is there anything else we need to convey here? I think I need to convey that I'm going to go make a green juice. Ah. <laughs> green <laughs> no, juice No, I think, I think that about covers it. All right, guys, let us know if we can help. And you can always email us, Justin at Extreme Health Radio. Or Kate at Extreme Health Radio. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. Episode. It's time to go for now, but our mission does not end with this show. Justin and Kate will be back with another interview packed full of ideas, discoveries, and unique ways to regain your health. Head on over to extremehealthradio.com forward slash subscribe and instantly download our free gift too that contains cutting edge strategies to start making healthy lifestyle changes today. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even as you educate yourself in the field of life, food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers or listeners medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition. While information in this blog and during this podcast is discussed in the context of numerous conditions, it can be dangerous to take action based on any of the information on this podcast or in this blog, or to start any health program without first consulting a health professional. The content found here is...